get all these great songs in. How's everybody tonight? Did you get you a good nap? No? Yes? No? Maybe? Just a little? I didn't, so uh, that's it. I just uh, wished I had, but I'm looking forward to a long, unfortunately we can't say winter's nap because we're in South Carolina, aren't we? I tell you what, 70 degrees and what, 79 on Friday, 78 and then a while ago, it felt like it was going to snow out there, I think. So I don't know what, what to expect tomorrow. But, hey, it's just a great. We still live in God's country, don't we? Amen. That's what a great place to live. And I'm so thankful to be here, especially with you people. And uh, if you're visiting with us tonight, thank you for being here. I look out. we got some visitors and uh, some good friends of mine. So I just thank you for being here. And it's always good to be here on a Sunday night. Uh, I do want to remind you of a lot of things. We have a lot going on. It just seems like we're having to pack so much in real quick because uh, it seems like they took a Saturday away from us before Christmas this year. We only have, just think about it, it's just three more weekends and Christmas is here and only two more Sundays before Christmas. And uh, so there's a lot of things going on. Remember uh, uh, December the 11th, next Saturday night, our 6 o'clock, uh, bring side dishes and our dessert for our Christmas supper. I look forward to that, and I know it's going to be a good time. Then also on the 12th, next Sunday night, during this time, we'll be having our children's program. I know we got a lot of kids and children in the back, back there practicing and eating and working with them.
bring some finger foods, and we'll be celebrating uh, Christmas uh, through the child. I love it, through a child, uh, I guess you'd say, perspective of their eyes. And you never know what's going to come at the Christmas play, do you? But it's always good, I tell you what. But it's just a wonderful time. So we're looking forward to that and then the finger foods afterwards. And then on the 19th, re-remembering uh, our choir as they're doing the uh, uh, Aceville Adult Choirs, they'll be doing the Christmas cantata. What a wonderful time of year, right? Is that right? Most wonderful time uh, of the year. I, I knew that, but uh, it's just be praying for them as they'll be continuing there and uh, so many other things. And then uh, on the 15th, I didn't say much, but don't forget, Wednesday night, the 15th, that's a week from this Wednesday night, it'll be uh, our bag packing. I always look, since I've been here, I, after I found out what that was all about, I look ex I'm excited and look forward to doing that. I see down in the uh, Fellowship Social Hall, there's so many things already being brought in and ready for that. And so be remembering that at 6 o'clock. Bring some desserts and drinks, and there'll be a lot of good food and fellowship as we do all of that. But that's some of the things. Also, remember what our about the uh, uh, GAs uh, and mi I mean the mission friends selling the T-shirts. The T-shirts right over here. See Jennifer, and she will get those for you. And all the proceeds from that will go to our Lottie Moon's Christmas offering. And while I'm talking about that, just to be a reminder, if you want to know about Lottie Moon, you heard a little bit this morning from uh, Jennifer as she was sharing, but there's a little pamphlet back there on the shelf. It gives you a great just story of who Lottie Moon is. It talks about her, just how she shared the gospel with so many people in China and how we came about as Southern Baptists making this the Lottie Moon offering at Christmas. And you can read about that. There's also some prayer calendars back there and an envelope if you'd like to put your offering in, and we'll be taking our offering every service up through uh, Christmas, so just be praying about what God would want you to, to give there. Is there anything else as far as uh, announcements? The 19th p.m. we'll be having our, our annual Aceville Christmas, which I always look forward to with singing, so uh, I'm sure just let Connie know that if you'd like to be a part of that, and we look forward to that also. Also, just to also be reminded about the ornaments back on the tree uh, if you would like one of those and like to just make a donation, put that in there. Our youth, uh, young people have a family that we're going to be helping. That's a mother with two uh, children that the monies that they have raised so far would be going to help them during the Christmas time. So if you would like to take part in that, see Amy Lawson. I know she would love to uh, share with you what she's doing there. Uh, is there any other announcements? If not, we do want to go... Uh, in prayer, we have many, like we mentioned this morning, many in our church family that have been sick. Uh, Heath, I know he's still not feeling 100%, so continue to pray for him. Debbie and uh, Billy, continue to pray for Debbie and Billy Wright as they're uh, ten, uh, recovering. And I understand Deb and uh, Rich, when they got back, uh, I think they tested positive, so continue to pray for them uh, as they're back in New Jersey, but pray as uh, they're getting over that. And, and uh, can pray for Janice. Uh, she was here, and then she's here tonight. Pray for her. She'll be getting that uh, out tomorrow. And uh, seems like she's feeling a lot better. And uh, but pray for her now. She's been having some sinus, but uh, pray for her as she'll uh, be going back to the doctor tomorrow. Continue to pray for uh, Mark Murdoch, and uh, as he is still on the list for a kidney transplant, and also Johnny Guthrie as Johnny continues to take his treatment there each day and uh, having to go back for many doctor's visits, but just continue to pray for him in these days. Pray for uh, John Partain's sister, who will be having surgery. And also remember little Tinley uh, Sorrow. She will be having some tubes and things in her uh, on Wednesday, I think, December the 8th. I'm going to follow up and make sure of that, but I'm pretty sure that's the date that they gave me last week. So be praying for them. And uh, how about others? I know we got many others, or maybe some updates on some people. Remember him on that bronchitis. Pray for Tommy there. Tommy's fighting bronchitis there himself, so just be with him. So, yeah, let's continue. How about others? 
Okay. Hey, man. Hey, well, thank, thank the Lord. Continue to lift her up. Any others? Pray for Terry Boggs. How about others? Well, if not, let's go to the Lord in prayer. And Leland, would you just uh, lift up these requests for us tonight? and sing, Go Tell It on the Mountain. Stand it as we sing.
I'm going to do uh, We Three Kings. Try to anyway. <laughs> think about and just thinking about hymns and Christmas songs and uh, carols think about your you think back and some of them bring back memories of your your uh, youth when maybe growing up as children maybe when you sung those or certain things and you just kind of bring takes you just kind of takes you back to a certain time in your life but you know uh, uh, what a wonderful time of year and, uh, you know, this morning we talked about Mary accepted. And then as I was praying, next Sunday morning, uh, you want to hear, this is really scary, next Sunday morning will be the last time I get to preach before Christmas. Bless. <laughs> Which, by the way, I got a friend. Did y'all know we had a, I got a friend here? I've been praying that God would send something to move you people. We got a squirrel inside the church. I'm praying that he breaks loose in a service. I call him Alvin, okay? I named him today. And me and Mike's already, Mike McGahead back there, I said, Mike, if he comes out, I'm done because I'm going to look back and I know you're going to be rolling in the floor. Cause, but he'll stick his head up every now and then. My wife heard nothing of the sermon this morning. She acknowledged it at lunch, said, I don't know what you preach about because I was watching for that squirrel. But I don't want y'all to be watching for Alvin tonight. And I got to pr praying about, you know, it, it, this is not a Christmas message tonight. It's just something that God laid on my heart. You know, you think about Joseph, you think about Mary, you think about all the characters in the Christmas uh, story. And then you think about us during this time of year. How often do we see something that we might be able to do and we wonder, how do we be sure this is God's will? 
how, do, how are we sure this is God's will? How are we sure this is what God wants us to do? So I got to looking and praying. And so I, I've got one verse I'm going to read tonight. And then I'm going to just point out some things. And I just hope God will speak to you just as uh, he has spoken to me. Psalms 40 verse 8. I delight to do your will, O oh my God, and your law is within my heart. Father, just uh, use this message tonight that you've laid upon my heart. Help me to just be able to clearly speak the words you'd have me to speak. And Lord God, I just pray that at the end of the service, Father, you'll be glorified and you'll be pleased with what we've done. I know you've already pleased with all the... The, the songs and, and things that we've done this far. But Father God, I pray during the message, you'll hide me behind your cross. Speak through me and use me. And Lord God, we would just hear a word from you. And we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. If someone asked you what Christians mean when they speak of the will of God, what would you say? What would you say? How would you explain it? You know, uh, sometimes I, I, I think... It, uh, although a lot of times we, we just say, I don't know how, but although it, it may seem like a strange concept to the unsaved person, God's will, because they don't understand it, but we as believers need to understand exactly what that term means. What's it mean? The will of God refers to His purpose, plan, and desire for our life. Think about that. Think about this for just a moment. What a blessing it is for me and you. For God to even have a plan, a purpose, and a desire for my life. He loves me and he cares for me. Everything that I do, everything that I say has a plan and a purpose. You know, Christians should have that same attitude that I just read in Psalms 40 verse 8. I delight to you your will. Oh, my God, your law is within my heart. We should have that in our hearts, and our attitude should be with us in everything that we do. But so often we sit in church. We sit in churches every week without giving any thoughts to God's will for our life. How often do we just sit here and we really don't ever think about it? Well, I'm not used like Mary. I'm not a Mary. Hey, there. yes, we are. Here's the thing that we need to be reminded of. God wants to use us in miraculous ways the same way that we see how he used Joseph and Mary. He does. We have to be able to know it and understand it. You see, we have no idea a lot of time what he wants to accomplish in, in us and through us because we don't even look for it. Every day of our lives is to be lived for God's purpose. Think about that for just a moment. God, who spoke and creation happened. God, who sent the promise through a baby. That's the God that we need to be living for and that purpose for us every day because according to his plan, we need to be doing what he wants us to, but we have to be obedient. Obedient. We have to understand what his desires are. But how can we be sure we're walking in his will, especially in times when maybe, maybe there's some hard times, maybe some difficult times, maybe some suffering or even pain going on? Guys, we all have that from time. I have it a lot of times when things, and I tell you what, when God's trying to speak to me a lot of times, he'll send some suffering, maybe not pain hurting maybe physically, but spiritually or things in my heart. And he gets my attention. And it's during those times that we need to understand. Because when those trials may be contrary to what God's will is, he assures us that whatever he allows, he's designing for the good. Romans 8, 28, all things happen together for good for those who love God and, call, and are called according. When things seem like they're going crazy, haywire, that's when God is still working his plan and purpose in our life. I think we need to be reminded of that more and more in this day uh, that we live in because the world is chaotic. It's going out of control. 
And God still has a plan and purpose for the United States. I do believe that. I still believe that he wants us to be that Christian nation that leads the whole world. It hadn't changed. It's just our people and our leaders have changed. So we need to see that God's plan and purpose is even through that. He designs heartaches a lot of times. And he designs these stumble uh, uh, things in our life to make us get, to really get our attention. But I want to just list a few categories of God's will. Just, and these are just things to make you think. Categories of God's will and things that we need to. The predetermined will of God. What is that? You see, there are certain events that the Lord has predestined to occur. And no one can change that in our life. He's already did that. And he's done that. And they're going to happen. When we're born. When we die. Those are there. They're not going to change. Nothing. And you see, there's other things that God has put in there because it's His will and He wants them to happen. It's almost like, and I'm just telling you, and this is something, even though I ran from it, He had predestined and called me to be a minister. And I didn't want that. I didn't want to do God's will. I ran as fast as I could and as far as I could for as long as I could. But look what happened. You see, a lot of things are in there in predetermined will of God. And then you think about his moral will. Have you ever thought about his moral will? These are righteous standards by which God intends for mankind to live. Let me tell you, this is something that happens no matter what. A good example is the Ten Commandments. Why are the Ten Commandments out there? God's moral will. The Ten Commandments are there and they apply. And they let me tell you, this is the thing that unsaved people in our world does not understand. They don't understand they can take the Ten Commandments out of our schools, out of our courthouses, out of our government buildings, but the Ten Commandments still apply to them. They still apply to them. But they don't think they do because we as Christians are not living or even paying any attention to them. They're important. That's his moral will. Then you his circumstantial will. When we fail to live up to God's standards, he wants us to know how we should respond to these circumstances. He wants us to be reminded of what we need to be doing. His circumstantial will, which leads us to God's immediate will. Do you know God's immediate will is for every one of us here today? This covers what the Lord desires us to do today in our current circumstances or situations. Let me ask you, have you really ever thought about God's will for your life, God's immediate will for you right now? I think, and I think we have become a people that think God gets caught by surprise. But God knows what's going to happen. He just wants us. To know what his will is. His immediate will. Do you know how many of you really feel like you have done everything in God's immediate will today? Well I went to church this morning. I went to church tonight. What else? You know there was more. You know Jesus said to go make disciples. How can we be sure what we, what we are considering or what we're doing, or what we're thinking about is God's will. How many of you ever get into this, this situation, and this is me? Is this really what God wants me to do? Is, is this really what I should be doing? Is this really what I should be thinking about? Especially during Christmas. God will lay somebody, and guys, this is, God will lay somebody or something upon your heart, and you start thinking, should I really be doing this? Should I really reach out to that person? Should I invite them to church? Each day is filled with decisions. Guys, each day our life is filled with decisions. Whether to, what not only, not just simple things like what to eat, but who to talk with, who to share with. And every choice is an opportunity to ask the Lord what he would have us to do. Guys, knowing the will of God is important for us. You see, the decisions that we make could be practical decisions, moral decisions. Think about it. 
We all have those. I have those. And Satan will give you opportunities to make moral decisions, guys, if you don't believe it. He'll make you those opportunities. And we got to be ready. Those financial decisions. Is this what really God wants me to do today? Is this where he wants me to put my money or send my money? And there's issue after issue after issue that we have to make decisions. Every aspect of our life should be submitted to the will of God because he has already chosen the best possible course for us. Can I stop right there for just a second? Every aspect. Every aspect of our life should be submitted to God. Boy, it's quiet. I wish y'all would say, hey, good, and shake your head. You see, those decisions should be submitted to God because he's already chosen the path that we should go. This is the thing that we need to stop and think about. He's already chosen the right way. He already knows the right way, and yet we're sitting here fighting about it. He's chosen the best possible course for you and I to take every day. But we need to be reminded, and we need to be thinking and making sure that we're following God's will. Now, here's the thing I mentioned a while ago. A lot of times we think God's caught off guard. But it, he knows every circumstance of our lives. He knows everything that's going to happen to me before I even go to bed tonight. He knows what's going to happen in the morning when I get up. And he knows how many times I'm going to make Connie mad tomorrow before we go back to bed. Tommy, you know where I'm going. But you see, that's what I laugh about. But let me tell you what he does know too. He knows every circumstance of my life and your life from birth to death. That little dash, he knows it all. And he has provided the wisdom for us. The grace, remember the grace we spoke about this morning. He has provided not only wisdom, but grace, goodness, and mercy to work in our hearts and guide us on every step of the way in our life if we'll just let him by doing the will of God. Now, you know, something else that I think we need to be reminded of here is he's here to help us confirm whether our decisions line up with what he's wanting us to do. And let me tell you what, if our decisions need to be lining up, with, we need to make sure they line up with God's will. Here's what I think we need to be doing. We need to ask a few questions. You know, it's the old question thing. This is it. Is this decision consistent with God's word? Guys, if you're going through some hard times and wanting to make sure that God's will is where you need to be going or you want to be sure of God's will, the first thing you need to be doing is making sure it lines up with his word. That's all it is. If it doesn't line up with God's word, then he probably don't want you to do it. He probably doesn't want you to do it. See, if it's not lining up with his word, he, he will... Because his will and his word always agree. You know, in homes, sometimes the husband and wives will not always agree on, on things. Well, let me tell you, God's word and God's will always agree. Never has been a time when they did not go hand in hand and agree. So we need to be reminded of that. And you see, we need to be reminded that, to ask ourselves, is this a wise choice? And You know, common sense, Mr. Robert, still works today, doesn't it? It's a good thing to ask this question. Is this really a wise thing for me to do? I can think back on my youth and growing up and my young There was a lot of things that was not wise for me to do. That night I climbed that 30-something foot ladder with no tie off or anything and one little old fella holding it at the bottom. That wasn't wise. I fell about five minutes after I got up there. But you know, sometimes just asking, is this a wise thing for me to do? I think God just wants us to ask these simple questions, common sense, because an initial consideration should be what the consequences are. What are the consequences if I do this? Or what are the consequences going to be? Or, or what's going to happen? You know, every decision comes with consequences, guys, good or bad. I know how many of you parents have told your kids that growing up. You got teenagers, Sean. 
You probably tell them that all the time. Consequences, 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 good and bad, right? How many of you were told that? Every decision has consequences. But you see, we need to be reminded that not only that, we need to be reminded that those consequences a lot of times affect others too. You see, we must evaluate what the likely results of our choice will be and how it will affect not only me and my life, but how can God use it or how will it affect others? You see, our choices will influence people. Think about it. This is what, as I got older and as God continues to mature me, some of the decisions that I have made have influenced people negatively and positively for the Lord. And you know, it's so much harder to overcome those negative influences more so than the positive ones. I wonder, and I tell you what, sometimes it just breaks my heart thinking about the times that I probably have said something or done something that has kept somebody out of church. Mm. Consequences. Our choices. How they influence. Because people watch us. People watch how we live and how we walk and how we respond. But can I ask you, can I honestly ask God to enable me to achieve his, his purpose or his decision sometimes? Can I honestly ask, God, can you help me? Can you help me achieve this decision? Can you help me to make sure I'm doing the right thing? Is that an okay aunt, uh, question to ask? Yes. Because the Christian life is a serious relationship. A serious relationship with the Lord. If you've got a serious relationship with the Lord, you can ask Him that. So many times people say, well, I can't ask. God. God's too busy. Hey, look, if your relationship is where it needs to be with the Lord, you can ask Him anything. You know, you've had those friends, you've had those uh, uh, family members, mom or dad or uncle or somebody that says, hey, look, if you, you can ask me anything you won't ever ask. You've told your children that, and they ask you that question. So go ask your mama, go talk to your mama or something. You know, you send them to the other one. That, and don't tell me none of y'all have ever done that. You know, you can ask me anything. They ask you, go, ask, go talk to your mama about that or your daddy. But you see, God tells us, and our relationship, that grace that we talked about this morning opens up the door for us to ask him anything. Anything. And he will answer. He'll answer. You know, and I wonder, since we live in a world opposed to God, the world does not understand that. They think we're crazy when we sit there talking to God. But you see, that's what God wants us to do. They think we're just a little bit off. Well, let me tell you what, their inadequacy or they're not where they need to be, but we're right where we need to be when we're talking to him on every decision, when we're going to him. You know, if you're like me, there's things that I have going on right now that I just can't get peace about. If you're living a life today, you have complete peace. Praise God. Praise God. Because there's so many people who are not. Because there's things that burden us. There's things that burden us. And you know, this is the thing that I think we need to ask sometimes when we're going through these decision-making processes, trying to seek the will of God, is, God, will you just give me peace about it? And he will. Think about Mary we mentioned this morning. Do you think she was at ease at the decision that she had to make? But what did I tell you this morning? How do you get rid of fear? Grace. The grace that God offers us every day is what helps us to understand. And when we are walking in God's will, we will have peace. You say, well, Preacher D, you just said that you've got some turmoil and maybe you're not at peace about things. Yes, that's right. But I'm walking in God's will. He gives me comfort. But I'm just not 100% sure where I'm going. But I do have peace about it. 
But you see, how many times in our world when we look outside, you go to for you at go to work tomorrow in your offices, you see people coming in, and all they tell you is the horror stories of what went on this weekend. No peace. Why is there no peace? Because there's no God in their life. Guys, what I'm telling you tonight, we are Christians. Everyone sitting in this room tonight declare to be Christian. What are people seeing? Because they're watching you tomorrow when you go into your office. They're watching you when you're having to make some tough decisions. Are you letting them know that you're asking God for guidance and direction? Because if the decision is not according to His will, there'll be some doubt and irritation. You know, I think a lot of times when people are watching what we do, we need to be reminded that God's will is consistent and always the same. And you know, does the decision fit who I am as a follower of Jesus Christ is one of the best things that I think we need to ask ourselves. What God is asking us to do, does this fit me as a follower of Jesus Christ? Now, I'm going to just take a side trip right here for just a moment. On Wednesday nights up till uh, last week, we were doing a fan or you're a fan, uh, 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 not a fan. And it was really talking about true followers of Christ. When you become a true follower of Christ, your life is turned upside down by the world's view. It doesn't make sense. It usually doesn't make sense to your dead. And you say, what? Because the people that kind of not understanding what's going on, realize the impact you had on people's lives after you're gone. The decisions that we're making for the will of God today are the ones that are going to leave a legacy. And you know, this is the thing that I thought about when I was preparing this. If I died right now, what would people be thinking about me tomorrow? Boy, he was ignorant. Boy, he was dumb. He never did this, or would they say he was a follower, someone that changed people's lives? What are you doing in the immediate God's will today that people are noticing? What is it? So I ask you, as we go through this and we think about this, the will of God, knowing the will of God, the decisions that you might be having to make right now, will it honor God? When you say, well, what the decisions on financial concerns, where to go, what to do, who to invite to church, maybe this, that, is it honoring God? Every decision. The Lord is honored when our choices align with His Word, but if we have unrest in our hearts and the situation keeps us awake at night, then we need to reconsider our decisions. We need to reconsider those decisions. God brings up troubling thoughts to protect us from wrong choices because He lives, He loves us and wants to guide us to the best possible path. I want to tell you that. I want to read it again. I wanted to make sure you got everything. God brings up troubling thoughts to protect us from wrong choices because He loves us and wants to guide us to the best possible path. Those sleepless nights, it's not because of what you ate at the Mexican restaurant. Sometimes it's God just making you think about those things that you need to be doing to make sure you're on the right path. So I ask you tonight, choices that you're making, or you're in the will of God, or you're doing what God wants you to do, can you expect God, this is the thing, can you expect God to reward you for the decisions that you're making? Think about that. What if everything, you say, well, I'm not supposed to be looking for rewards. No, you're not, but when you get to heaven, you'll get rewarded for doing God's will. Think about that for just a moment. This is the thing we as Christians have put outside the, out the pasture, they say. We're not worried about that. We're just wanting to get through today. Decisions that you have made today and the decisions that you're making in the days ahead when you stand before Jesus as a Christian. 
will you be rewarded for it? Or will you be rewards taken away? See, that's a good way to find out if God's will is where you need to be or you're following God's will. Can you expect God to reward you for those decisions? The choices we make in this life determine whether our actions are worthy of blessings now and our future rewards in heaven. Guys, that's what we're living. We, my thing is, is we need to not be living for pats on the back down here. If you want pats on the back down here, that's the only reward you're going to get. But if you want rewards in heaven, then be doing things for God. I'm saving mine for when I get up there because I want all I can get to lay at his feet and just thank him for what he did coming as a baby and being born in a manger to a, a little girl that was a virgin that only God could do it because he's all powerful. I want to lay everything I can rewarded down at his feet and just say thank you for not making me have to take the, what I deserved. He took a beating for me. He took a beating for me. He died for me. He lost all his blood for me. And I don't like any of that. And because of all the things that he wants me to live, he's given me a chance to store up things that I can lay at his feet and worship him. Worship him. So as you look back at some of your past decisions, how much thought did you give to whether they were God's will? And as you look forward, what have you learned from maybe just this one little simple, simple verse and this little simple message tonight? What have you learned tonight that might help you in the days ahead? I delight to do your will, O oh my God, and your law is within my heart. Guys, if you're a Christian tonight, that's what you're saying or what you should be saying. I delight to do your will. God, I want to be and do what you want me to be. I want to do what you want me to do. And God, your law is in my heart. The love is in your heart. I, I like to use that word. Your love is in my heart because when your love, the love of God is within our heart, then we see things totally different. We see people totally different. We know who we need to be helping and who we don't need to help. We know who we need to be praying for. We know who we need to be encouraging. We know who we need to be sharing because it's the love of God and we're seeing what His will is. Think about that. When we have his love in our heart, we step back and we can see what he sees. Because it aligns with his word and it aligns with what he wants done. He's being glorified. He's being glorified. People are being brought to the cross. Lives are being changed. And Gabriel shows up. Remember what we said when he shows up? All power. My God's powerful. My God's powerful. So I don't know what God has spoken to you tonight, but I just say, just be reminded during this Christmas season as we've seen Joseph and Mary, how they, I'm sure they struggled. I know I would. But they knew God's will because he sent a message. Zacharias was told at the altar of incense, God's going to answer your prayer. You know, sometimes we got to be reminded that's what this altar is still made for us to come and God tell us what he wants us to do. That's what it's here for. It hadn't lost its power. It hadn't lost its purpose. 2,000 years ago, they were praying at altars. It's still here, guys. God wants to speak. So during the invitation, whatever God's telling you, if he's telling you to just come and talk with him, pray with him, or if I can pray with you, whatever it is, just be obedient to what, is, what he's telling you to do. Father, we just commit this time to you, and your will be done. And we ask it in Jesus' name.
Amen. Stand as we sing just as I am. every eye, would you close your eye? Everyone here, just close your eyes and just pray. God is speaking tonight, people. What's he telling you to do right now? He's telling people to do things. I'm not trying to coach you into doing anything. I'm just trying to make sure you're doing what God's will is for your life. I hope you have a good week. Thank you for being here tonight. I know God's going to bless you for just uh, being here, being part of the service. Speak to somebody as you leave, and just remember uh, all the busy things that we've got going on. Just be a part of them. And I tell you what, what better time during the Christmas season is to invite someone you know that's not in church. This is a good time of year. Their hearts are probably there. Invite them and ask them to come because we've got a lot of activities. And I tell you what, we've got a lot of good food. And I just still, I just, I love, just we got a beautiful church. Nothing else, just say, come let me show you how pretty our church is. <laughs> and then you can say how good looking my our pastor is. No, don't lie. <laughs> Father, we just thank you so much for this day. We just pray you'll bless us, watch over us, and take care of us. Help us to just do your will in everything that we do. In Jesus' name, amen. God is so good.